All right, welcome back. This is going to be lesson four in our beginning computer programming series using Python. Uh, like I always say, if you haven't watched the videos before this, you probably need to go back and check those out. Um, but we're going to do a little housekeeping before we get started. I've had a few people watch these and kind of contact me and make some suggestions. And so we're going to do a couple things going forward. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to do is in the description down below the video, I'm going to put some timestamps uh, to let people go back and jump into the parts of the video they need while they're working on the homework. Uh, I had a couple people say that that's something they need. I'm also going to break the video up a little bit more into sections. That way it's easier to compartmentalize what you're learning. So we're going to start with the homework from last time. And so last time I asked you to create a program that would take the length, width, and height of some object, specifically a rectangular prism, I believe, and do the volume for that. So what I've done is I've just gone ahead and made that, and we're going to go through this real quick and talk about it, and then we'll maybe spice this up a little bit. Like I said, there was a little bonus point if you could use what we talked about in the last lesson in this program, and then we'll move forward with what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so to begin with, we just have the program here, and you can notice that my screen looks a little different than last time. I'm actually using Vim, which is another sort of text editor development environment. Um, I'm going to be a little slow in this one because I'm not as familiar with the key bindings, but we'll, we'll make it work. All right, so from here, what I'm going to do, uh, let's go up to the top. This top line, I have a comment, and it tells me what the code is doing. It says to take the user's input of the rectangular prism's length, width, and height, and store them in variables. So what I'm going to do is I go down here, and I create a variable called length, and I set that equal to the input of the question, what is the length of your rectangular prism? And then I basically just do the same thing again. I do that with width and height, and they all get stored in their own variables. So then I have a comment here that tells me that I'm going to find the volume by making the input's integers and then multiplying them together um, like we did with our area formula or our area program in the last lesson we learned that when you input something into input it thinks it's a string so we had to convert those into integers so here i set the variable volume equal to the integer of length times the integer of width times the integer of height and if you think about this we didn't really talk about it but to find the volume of a rectangular prism the formula in math is volume equals length times width times height. So that's actually what I'm doing. And then we will print whatever the answer to that was by just using the print function and calling volume on that. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. So I'm going to pull up a terminal in here. Now this is another thing that I can do inside of uh, Vim that I could do in Emacs. So I'm going to have to navigate around a little bit. So we're going to find where my, and then I believe it is, we're going to call the program Python 3, and we're going to call that on lesson4.py, which is this program that I just wrote. Um, we'll talk about how to do this in another lesson, how to use sort of a command line structure to get there, but just so we can run it, we'll see what's happening here. Okay, it says, what is the length of your rectangular prism? We're going to use some simple numbers. Let's call, let's say that it's 5. And then what is the width? Uh, let's go with 2. So 5 times 2 would be 10. And then the height. So we've got 5 times 2, which is 10. Let's do 4. So the 5 times 2 is 10 times 4 is 40. And so it gives me the answer 40, which is exactly what I wanted to have. So I know right now that that works exactly the right way. So I told you that there was some bonus going on here. Um, now, I could use the area formula that we figured out last time, which was just length and width, and then use that inside of here. To be completely honest, it's not going to make our program run any better, but it's it's still something that's interesting to show you how to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bop up here, and I'm not going to change the comments. I would if this was something that I, I was really interested in doing. I'm going to go here and let's create an area. And so what we're basically going to do is take our length and width and do what we did in the past one. Okay, so we're going to take length and we're going to multiply that times the integer of width. Okay, so when we do that, let's switch modes here. We're going to go down here to this and instead of saying integer times 
the, the integer of length times the integer of width times the integer of height, I can actually go here and let's get rid of all this. And I could just say area times the integer of height. And it really isn't going to change what happens behind the scenes, but it lets me create more variables. The nice thing about having more variables is if you have to go back and change a thing, um, it's much easier for you to be able to do that with a variable than it is to go back and find every occurrence of that thing inside the program. So just because we're sitting here, let's go ahead and I'm going to escape out of this. Let's try this again. Make sure that it works the right way. I got to go find my thing again. Okay, so we're here, and then we're going to run Python 3, and we're going to run that on lesson4.py. And it goes here, and we're going to use those same numbers. It was 5, and then 2, and then 4. And I still get the same answer. So even though we changed the code, we, it really didn't change how this works. But we were able to embed what we had learned before into this. Okay, so that's going over the homework. Let's dive right into the new stuff. Okay, so now we're going to talk about functions. And we talked about them a little bit before, um, and we've been using functions. But now we're going to learn how to do some fun stuff with them. Uh, now, I'm back in REPL.IT. This seems to be a place that a lot of people are using. So this is pretty quick, so we'll do a lot of it here. Looking at functions you've already used, there's really two. You've used uh, the function. Let me get over here. You've used the function print, which has the parentheses behind it. You've also used a function called input, which has parentheses behind it. Kind of get the, the pattern that's happening here. Um, and we when we talked about functions, we talked about in math and in code, basically all the function is, it's a, it's a little piece of code that takes an input. So it's almost like a little mini program that you're writing um, or has already been written in the case of print and input. Those are built in. We don't have to write those. Now today what we're going to do is learn how to create new functions that you make yourself. Um, we won't go into why that's important or why it makes programming a lot easier. Today I just want you to focus on how to do it. Um, it's fairly simple. I'm going to give you the recipe. Um, a lot of times coding is recipes. So what I would do if I was in your situation is I would have my auxiliary brain open because I'm going to give you the recipe and you're going to need to look at it again. So make sure you have this written down somewhere. Okay. So to create a function, you're going to use a magic word. Um, this magic word is just telling the computer, hey, 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 pay attention. I'm, I'm about to make something. Okay, so that magic word is def, and it stands for define. Um, some programming languages actually spell out the word define. Python doesn't, it just uses def. Okay, so that's me telling the computer, hey, wake up, I'm getting ready to do something. Now, the next word that I type in is going to be the name of the function. And I'm going to write that in here so we can sort of have that there. Let me move my mouse so it's not in the way. Okay, so first word is def. Second word is the name of the function. Whenever I want to call this function, I need to say its name right here. Then I put parentheses. Okay, now we've seen parentheses before. Um, in every function we've used, there are parentheses. And we always put the input into there. And we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, the technical word is parameters. But you can think of it as inputs, things that I'm putting in. Um, it gets a little more complicated later, but parameters is the official word. But for right now, just think things that I'm sticking in the function, um, name a function in, the, in this case. Now, the next part of this recipe is the most important. It's the part that people mess up the most. Um, even people who've done this for a long time, this is, this is a place where I mess up quite a bit. I'll forget to do this, and it messes everything up from here down. So just pay attention. I'm going to move over one. And here at the end of my parentheses, I need to put a colon. Okay, and this is going to do a couple things for us. One, it signals Python that, okay, we're, we're done with this defined statement that tells me the name and the parameters. The other thing it does is it's going to help us format our code. When I hit enter, you're going to notice something. Normally, when I hit enter, the cursor goes all the way to the left. Okay, and here it didn't. It's actually further in towards the right. It's exactly four spaces over. And Python does indenting with four spaces, or that's the standard. Um, you can use your tab key if you want to for that, or you can use four spaces. It doesn't matter. Most code editors like uh, REPL.IT, like Emacs, like uh, Vim, all of them, when you hit enter after that 
colon at the end, it's going to do the spacing for you. But what this does is it says everything indented is goes to this function. Okay, so once I do that, the only thing I have left to do to create a function is I have to write the body of the function. Okay, and then that's the whole making my own function. The body of the function is the actual code that's go going to run every time we call this function. Okay, so that's the blueprint. That's the recipe. You're going to need that. So make sure you've got that written down somewhere. Okay, so what I want to do to show you how this works is I'm going to take some of the early programs that we wrote in earlier lessons, and I'm going to change them into functions. Um, you'll see that the code tends to be sort of the same, but we're packaging up it packaging it up inside of a function. Okay, so I'm going to go back and we're just going to leave all this here. Now, I'm going to go back to Hello World. We're not going to write Hello World, but we're going to write sort of the more advanced version of Hello World that we did. So I'm going to create a function. I'm going to name it Hello. Okay, so this is the name of the function. That's that part in our recipe that said the name of the function. Okay, and that that function, hello, it's going to take one parameter, one input. That's going to be a name. Okay, I'm careful, so I'm going to put my colon because that's oh, <laughs> not like that. I'm going to put a colon there. Okay, that moved everything over. Now, this is what I want to happen every time I call hello. I want to use print. So I'm using a function inside a function. That's okay. And inside here, I'm going to print a string. Hello comma, space, move over. I'm going to concatenate or add. And actually I want, I'm gonna do this to kind of make it a little clearer. Oh, too far. And then I want to concatenate whatever I set as name, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're here and we've got everything we need. Now, to you notice when I hit enter, it was already spaced over. Once I'm done, I just go back like this, and now I'm outside of that function definition. Now, if I hit run right now, nothing happens. I wrote the code, but I didn't call it. And this is similar to where in the past we, at the end, didn't make a print statement, so nothing showed up. We have to call the function we made. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to call hello, and I'm going to give it a name. Now, I'm going to give it the name Josh. Okay, and we're going to run it and see what happens. Oh, we have an error. Okay, so it says trace back most recent call. This is how most errors happen in Python. Um, usually somewhere in here, it's going to tell you what happened that's wrong. So it says in line four, which down here I can go to my four that's on the side. It says the name Josh is not defined. Okay, well, when I look at this, what is the difference between this and this over here? It doesn't have parentheses, so it wants a string. So let's see if I change this into a string, if it makes it work. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna add quotation marks. Those could be single marks, they could be double marks, doesn't matter. Let's run it again and see if it works. And there it worked. So I used my error message to guide how to fix the problem. Okay, so that's me defining hello, uh, hello. Okay, so it's pretty simple. The code actually looks very, 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 very similar to what we've already done. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to rewrite the last time's homework. Let's write that as a function. Okay, so I've cleared my screen off a little bit here. And let's go here. And we're going to define a function called volume. And volume is going to take three parameters or three inputs. Just like the formula for math, we're going to need a length a width and a height. Okay, now I'm gonna move over. I'm gonna give it the colon that it needs. We're gonna move here. And then the code that I'm go going to call is I'm going to print length times width times height. Now, one of the things you're going to notice in this example is before I had to change length, width, and height into integers to make the math work. Now, when I create a function with it, 
I, I don't have to do that because when I put the inputs in or the parameters in, I'm putting them in as integers. So the computer already knows that they're integers. Um, where in input, whatever I put into input function comes out as a string. So here I could just leave it like this. Okay, let's call it and make sure it works. So we're going to call volume. And I'm going to give it the same numbers. If I remember correctly, it was five, it was two, and it was four. So I should wind up with 40 over here in my uh, REPL. So let's see. And I got what I wanted. So this is how to write simple functions. Okay, so what I'm going to do real quick is we're going to write one more function. And this is going to be a little more complicated when it comes to the math part of it. But it's really not that much different. We're going to create a function that is going to take a temperature in Celsius and convert it into a Fahrenheit temperature. Um, this is a thing that I've struggled with getting to travel a lot. You go to places where they don't know what Fahrenheit is and somebody will say something like, Ooh, it's, it's 30 degrees. It's really hot. And you're like, really, really? I, <laughs> that's weird. Um, so it's kind of a hard thing to wrap your brain around with how to convert these things. We have math formulas to do it. Let's create a computer program to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function called convert temp. Now, you're going to notice something. Um, I did a thing that's called camel case. You can't have spaces inside your function names. So there are different ways to handle this. One is called camel case, where the beginning of words will have capital letters, so it looks like the humps on a camel's back. Or you can put underscores where spaces are. That's another thing that people tend to do. Um, I like camel case, so I'm just going to do this. Now, when we do convert temp, we're going to have a temperature in Celsius. So let's just put a C there. That, that will work for us. Okay, we put our colon. That's very important. I go down here. Now, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to create a variable called Fahrenheit, right? So Fahrenheit is going to be equal to Celsius times... 9 divided by 5. Oop. Okay. This is all part of that formula for math. And then we're going to add 32 to it. Okay. So all that's happening is we're taking whatever that input of Celsius was. We're going to multiply that by 9 fifths. And we're going to add 32. Now, the nice thing about Python is, is it's really good about order of operations. It's smarter than a calculator. You know, if you have some of the, the simple calculators, you have to remember PEMDAS and you have to do things in the right order or you get the wrong answer. Python is really good about just doing order of operations for you. Now, I could go in here and tell it if I wanted to do it in a different order, um, how to do that using parentheses, just like you do in math. It's exactly the same. But it's actually smart enough to be able to do this. So I'm going to go down here, and so all the answer is stored in a variable called f. So now I need to get f. So let's print f out. Okay. Oh, wrong button. Okay. So now I have my function built. I have I've defined a function called convert temp. It takes an input. That input is the degrees in Celsius. Okay. Then I create a variable called f. And inside of that is the, the actual math it takes to, cre to figure out what it is in Fahrenheit. So I take Celsius times 9 fifths plus 32. And then that's all stored inside the variable F. So then I just print F. So now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to call convert temp. Okay, and I'm going to give it, and you can see actually one of the nice things about this is if you look down, Right now, you can see there's a little box that popped up. And so since I've already defined what convert temp is, it's telling me that convert temp needs a C or a Celsius. So that's a little hint to me of what to put inside that box. So let's go with something simple. Let's go with zero because zero Celsius is one of the few Celsiuses that everybody should know. So let's see what happens. And it's 32. Now it gives me a float because we have a fraction in there. So we're going to wind up with sometimes decimal points. So it creates a float, but zero degrees Celsius is 32 degrees. Okay, we can go back and change this. Let's, let's give it a different C. Let's just say um, something that I think is comfortable uh, would be 70 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That seems like a nice, comfortable temperature. Well, what is 70 degrees Celsius? Let's see. 
It's 156 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's nowhere near comfortable. Now, I was joking around that people say that 30 degrees is hot. Let's put in 30 degrees Celsius. Let's see what that is in Fahrenheit. 86 degrees. That's pretty warm. So, yeah. So this is an easy way to sort of create a function to do that for me. Now, like I said, we're not going to talk about why creating your own functions is helpful because really you could do this without creating a function and still get a program that works. As our programs get more complicated, creating functions is going to be more important. But right now, I just want you to learn how to create them. Okay. Don't worry about the, the specifics of how to use them. We're just going to create them and call them and make sure they work. Okay, here we are. We're at the end of our lesson. So that only means one thing. I got to give you some homework. Okay, the homework's going to be pretty simple this time. Uh, everything you need has been in this lesson, so you can go back with those timestamps and kind of figure out where to go. Hopefully between that and the notes you took in your auxiliary brain, you'll be able to handle this. Um, so I'm back inside Vim. We're going to use this for me to kind of give you your assignment. Uh, let me switch over here. Okay, now, first thing is you are going to create... A function called how long okay and I type that in camel case so it's that's the name of the function how long and it's going to take an input okay and the input for this or its parameter is going to be somebody's age okay so somebody's age is how long they've been alive in years, correct? So what I wanted to do is you give it, when you call how long with somebody's age, it's going to spit out some information. So you're going to have to do a little bit of math on this. This is the first time you're kind of creating your own math to do a thing. But here we go. I want, uh, let's see, uh, let's do three things. How many months old they are okay and then we'll do the same thing basically but a little bit how many weeks old they are uh oh up here okay and then finally okay so you're going to create a function called how long. It takes one parameter or one input. That's going to be the age of that person. And then what it's going to tell me is how many months old they are, how many weeks old they are, and how many days old they are. Um, do your best. This is just, like I said, I just want something that works. It doesn't have to be exactly right, but I just want something that is rough, a rough estimate of these things. Okay, good luck, and I'll see you next time.